2012. Afghanistan. About 7,000 miles away from his family in Colorado, Matt Figge received this video from his wife, Paige. It's horrible seeing these videos when I'm deployed. It was his five-year-old daughter, Charlotte, seizing. Diagnosed with a severe form of epilepsy, she was having 300 seizures a week. Each attack so severe, it had the potential to kill her. They had already tried dozens of high-powered drugs. We needed to try something else. And at that point in time, marijuana was that natural course of action to try. At home in Colorado, Paige searched for marijuana high in CBD. That's the ingredient some scientists think helps seizures and also low in THC. Remember, she didn't want to get her daughter stoned. She found a small amount at a Denver dispensary. The owner was surprised that anyone would even want it. They said it's funny because no one buys this, you know. Um, that was the general consensus, that nobody wanted it. It didn't have any effect. Paige paid $800 for a small bag and took it home. I had a friend that was starting a business uh, making medicine. And I said, can you help me extract the medicine from the, this bag of marijuana? <laughs> I measured it with a syringe and squirted it under her tongue. It was exciting and very nerve-wracking. Holding Charlotte in her arms, Paige waited. An hour ticked by, and then another, and then another. She didn't have a seizure that day, and then she didn't have a seizure that night. Did you sit there and just yeah. look at your watch? And... Right, I thought, this is crazy. And then she didn't have one the next day, and then the next day, and I thought, that is, she would have had 100 by now. And I just, I know, I just thought, this is insane. I remember how happy Paige was, like, it's really working, I can't believe it. Yeah, that was, that was pretty amazing to hear. It had worked. But in just a couple of weeks, the excitement was overshadowed by panic. Paige was running out of marijuana, and the dispensary didn't have any more of that particular strain. Even if there was more, the monthly price tag would have been astronomical. $2,000, and not a penny of it covered by insurance. But then Paige heard about the Stanleys, the six brothers, and their greenhouse of marijuana that is high in CBD. I said, oh my goodness. He says, I don't know what to do with it. We're trying these things with it, but no one wants it. It's not sellable. I said, just don't, <laughs> don't touch that, because we need that plant. At first, they didn't want to take the risk of giving marijuana to such a young child. But then they met her. Tell me about the first time you met Matt, Paige, and Charlotte. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get you uh, misty-eyed. Yeah, you get all of us crying when we start talking about that little girl. The Figgies had hit the jackpot, a steady supply of high CBD marijuana, and they only had to pay what they could afford. People have called us the Robin Hoods of marijuana. And they say that we sell pot so that we can take care of the kids and, and the truly less fortunate. Charlotte was the first of those kids. Late spring, 2012, she tried the Stanley special marijuana and again, it worked. I can't tell you what that, what that means to us. Get you, get you, doesn't it, a little bit. <laughs> if it doesn't get you, something's wrong with you. She lived her life in a catatonic state. Now her parents get to meet her for the first time. What a revelation. Yeah, gee. The child who had had 300 seizures a week was now down to just one every seven days. <laughs> Bitter Pat tiptoe. When I first met Charlotte, March of 2013, it was one year after that first dose of marijuana. A two. <laughs> after almost two years on a feeding tube, she was now eating on her own. Yellow? She was talking, like even baby. walking. Stop it. No, she said, please. No. But these stories, they are not without their skeptics. One of the country's two hospitals dedicated to Dravet syndrome in Florida states at present, there is no evidence that cannabidiol is effective for the treatment of epilepsy. The American Academy of Pediatrics also opposes cannabis as does the National Institute on Drug Abuse. It is such an amazing turn of events that it really can't be a fluke, but I do still wonder. Do you still wonder too? Yeah? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs>
You know it's working. <laughs> it's working great. You just look wonderful. And Charlotte's doctor, Alan Shackelford, also agrees. Yet his commitment to medical marijuana has drawn criticism. He's even been called Dr. Feelgood. How difficult is this for you to talk about as a physician? We are typically conservative as a, as a profession and, and probably as individuals. We want more proof. And cannabis doesn't have that. And it's why he has traveled the world to look for researchers who might have the answers. And that took him to the place many call the medical marijuana research capital. Israel. It might surprise you, but actually research into cannabis and epilepsy started here in the 1970s with studies that showed it could reduce convulsions in rats. Today, Shackelford is hoping to start clinical trials in humans there. We need to understand it well enough that they won't be reluctant to at least give it a thought, at least try it. And it's not just epilepsy, but researchers in Israel are studying a variety of illnesses. When we come back, what they're finding, up close, and an amazing look inside hospitals and nursing homes where patients are lighting up courtesy of the Israeli government.